Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Beyond the Frame. I'm Jay Neff, your host for today. And with me, I have a dear friend. She is an amazing individual, Miss Deandra Asbady from Beyond the Lanes. Deandra, woo, welcome. And the crowd goes wild. They go crazy. I mean, I can sound like that today. Sorry, peeps. <laughs> I really wish I was drinking that coffee that's right behind you. That was delicious. I'm telling you, that was some deliciousness right there. That was a <laughs> flat white, uh, half calf decaf, mocha latte squirt. I don't know. It was yeah, something. It was. Of course it that was. That guy over there, though, I'm telling you, he hasn't left forever. He, he is hasn't like moved. A, he's, he's a camper. I'm expecting him to pull out his porta potty if he has to go. He's frozen. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me on. Thank you for being here. Anything you're doing, I'm behind because I just love you. And oh, Deandra, you go way back. Um, we were talking before we started the show. Tell everybody what year we met and how old you were. You know, I, I okay, so back in the day, there was the Coca Cola tournament before yep. it was the Pepsi, before it was tournament, Pepsi, before it was the Junior Gold tournament. And um, my, I, I think. I don't know exactly the year. You think it's the I think it's 88, 89. It might be 90. Yeah, I think it's later. Um, was I bowling? Because You was were no not bowling oh. that year. Okay. Kathy was bowling and yeah. you were there spectating. But the very next year you did bowl. Yes. And, and so I represented Indiana and Cassie represented Kansas because she was in college. So that must have, I hadn't been maybe like, I bet it was like 92. So 1992, Rochester, we go, my whole family Olympic goes. Ball. And we left that tournament with a lifelong friend. Yes, you did, people. Yes, you did. And yeah. I left with multiple lifelong friends. Yes. I mean, my parents, you really had an impact on every one of us. And now, you know, our paths just cross occasionally. But whenever they do, I'm, I'm always so happy. You have such great energy. You have such a great spirit. You always you do great for bowling. So, you know, you're the type of friend that I love. Well, let me just talk about spirit and energy with you. First of all, I didn't even know you had this going. I mean, shame on me for not staying closely in contact with you. I see your blog posts. I see your social media stuff. I don't always listen to everyone, but I always, if it's interesting, I'm always like, oh, that's Deandra. God, I love her. Anyway. So I decide I want to chat with you for Beyond the Frame. And then I look you up again and I see you have Beyond the Lanes. And I start digging into your website and I go, this oh. is amazing. Oh. Deandra, tell everybody what Beyond the Lanes is to you and, and what, what a vehicle it is. Tell, tell, talk to us a little bit about that. I'm so glad you asked because um, at the beginning of 2020, I was kind of going through this, like, I don't know if you ever feel this in your life, like, you're, you're in the right place, but you're just like, I feel like I could be doing more. What is mm -hmm. my thing? And I was just really struggling to figure out, like, you know, I have an uh, elite youth tour nonprofit um, youth bowling tournaments here in, in the Midwest, and it's going awesome. And it's very close to my heart. And I love it, love it. But I just, you know, I, I'm still competing, but I'm not, I'm not doing it full time. I don't want to do it full time. Um, I know I have so much to give and I didn't know how and what capacity to give it. And then um, I talked with somebody and I was just talking through my, the, all of the things in my head. And I said to this person, I'm like, you know, I learned most of what I know about life through bowling. And that's true. Yeah. And, and life lessons, like through um, com competing you know, professionally on Team USA, falling down, getting up, all of this stuff. I have all of these life lessons in my mind. I want to be able to help others through the knowledge that I've learned in um, in my career. And so I thought, and I was, I, I was also talking to my husband, John. I was like, you know, I just, I, it's these kids and these adults that really want to be great at bowling. They don't realize that it's more than what they're doing on the lanes it's it's beyond the lanes and then i just stopped i was like whoa that's it it's that is it lanes. yeah and so i got serious about it and this was right before things shut down in chicago i got serious about it i um i'm always busy so there's always a reason why i can't do it right now I, i'm you know i have two amazing children so i'm very involved um they're freaking adorable fyi first of all 
if you don't get them kids in some kind of advertising model photo shoot, shame on you. Well, I, I, I already did check. Jersey, <laughs> Jersey is a model and she is signed with, um, with a talent agency and she's been in like radio flyer um, ads and commercials. Love it. I know, I know. Thank you very much for saying that. They are incredible and hilarious. You would love to spend time with I them. wonder where they get their personalities like, from. I know, <laughs> no, maybe us. Okay, so <laughs> I am busy, busy, busy. And I'm like, I really want to build this thing, but I just don't have the time. How am I going to do this? Bam, global pandemic. Can't leave my house. And I was like, instead of, you know, it was a hard time for so many people. But as you know, because you've known me a lot of my life, like I don't sulk. I don't look at the negative. I am like, okay, how can I use this as an opportunity? And so I can't leave my house. My main excuse for not building the things I want to build is because I'm out too much. I'm doing too many things. And now all of a sudden I'm at home. I can put my head down and I can build something from scratch. And so I hired a leadership psychologist to Ooh. organize the leadership thoughts that I have in my mind to create a curriculum that is my own. And um, I just pivoted and I got it done. And I launched it last spring online. It was, you know, still couldn't leave our house. So I was just like, well, and, and it was at a time where like everything was going to Zoom, everything was going online. But I'm like, well, let's just, you know, like you don't know if it's going to work until you do it, right? You pull right. the trigger. And There's so a I lot did. of trial and error in life. That's, that's right. And that's what you were trying to avoid having everybody have to learn on their own. What can I at least jumpstart them with that I've learned? Yeah. And so I did Beyond the Lanes Academy. It was a six week program every Tuesday night. I taught it live and um, they came. I, I had a, a class of an amazing, incredible people that showed up because they understood that if you want to become great in anything, it doesn't even have to be on the lanes. It's, it's about the time that you spend beyond the lanes. That's really going to get you there. I didn't become a world champion just because I had, just because I had great, great, great coaches, or just because I spent a lot of time practicing or believed in it. Like all of those things mattered, but honestly, the catalyst to becoming the world champion was the time that I spent beyond the lanes, goal setting, you know, figuring out how gritty I really was, um, understanding who I am and, and developing my self-awareness. Because if you don't know who you are, you know, Jay, if I listened to, to who I was from everyone else that tried to tell me who I was, I would have never became like- You'd have crawled in a ball in the corner and cried yourself to sleep because yeah. nobody's going to tell you all the good stuff. The no. ones that are telling you all the good stuff aren't going to tell you the truth either. So it's yeah. really a balancing act of you having to decide for yourself, who am I really? Because you're the only one who really knows. Well, and I think when you, when you hit some success in your life, um, there is jealousy from other people and they try to tear you down and they try to paint you paint this picture of you that isn't accurate and and so i remember in college i it was really hard for me i i remember um uh, i'm so i was so naive i just thought everyone was my friend i thought everybody's heart was like mine i'm just like happy i just want to be friends with everyone and i want harmony and then i started winning and then i i realized that those those people that i thought were my friends actually weren't and it was devastating mm -hmm. and then they were trying to tell me who i was and, and i could have done as i had two choices i could have fit their narrative and be right. that, or i could have done the hard thing which i did which was like this is who i am and like it or not like i am ha happy i am positive all the time i am gracious and you know if you're going to pick that apart then that is on you that's that totally moment, on you yeah in that moment it just broke my heart and I called home crying a lot because I'm like, I don't sure. know why they don't like me. I'm just, I am who I am and I'm just not being accepted. But now I can help those that are struggling with those same things that now it's worse with social media. Oh, oh could you imagine if we had Facebook when we were that age? No. I might not be here. <laughs> no, I know. It's like the, the level of comparison that is happening these days with these kids is so sad. Um, and so uh, when I went on the PWBA tour this year, I decided to try um, these beyond the lanes, this beyond the lanes tour. So I was going to hold 
finally in class sessions with, with these kids. And, and the first one that I did was in Minnesota and I was sitting and, um, and talking with these kids and I, I've developed so many amazing worksheets to go along with all of this um, curriculum. And I said to the kids, have you, we were just doing goal setting, like, you know, the, my process of goal setting. And, and I said, have you ever done anything like this? And they're just like, no. And I was like, whoa, like you've never had a process to get to your goals. How will you ever get to where you want to go if you don't have a plan. You need a map, girl. You need to have a map. You don't, it's not, you don't got Google built in your brain for that. There's no ways there. You have to write this stuff down. You got to draw it out. And then you got to have multiple ways there. And you're teaching your kids this stuff. You're teaching them to be flexible, to be, to be able to pivot, to be able to change course when they need to, not because somebody tells them, but because they realize this isn't working or this isn't getting me where I need to be. Well, let me try this route. And find the good, you know, even and with- find the good, right? Because out of everything that life deals you, and this is so philosophical that I want to just vomit when I say it, but it's so friggin' true. It happens for a reason. And it's so stupid because you might say, well, the earthquake killed 20,000 people. I know, I know, I know that's too much, but yeah. your life is yours and yours only. And when you step back and go, I am in control of this, all of these external forces that are out there that I'm having to deal with, I can actually understand them, map them and control what I can control about them. The ones that I can't control, nobody can control. So guess what? That's a wash. Yeah. Like how, how valuable is that message to impressionable minds? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so, so important. I mean, even from like the whole idea of like, um, you're going to learn more when you lose than when you win. I Ooh, mean, isn't that the truth? It's so true, but um, until you really live it, you don't get it. And so I have such a strong um, example of that because a lot, of, a lot of people remember me winning the Queens in 2012, but what they don't remember, well, I hope they don't remember, um, <laughs> is that I made a Queens show before and I was the number one seed and I beat everybody that week. I was undefeated. I was the number one qualifier. I was killing it. And then it was my first time on live TV and I bowled Kelly Kulik and um, I literally, and I prided myself on my mental game. Like I had it together. I read the books. I understood. I was ready until I wasn't. And I fell, I, I essentially did everything, but fall on my face, all of the wrong things. So um, that was really like defeating for me. And it was, it was everything. It was embarrassing and humiliating and sad. And I, said to myself after, I know what went wrong. I, and I made a list and, and I said, next time I'm in that situation, those things aren't going to happen. Win or lose. I am not going right. to, do, I'm not going to make those mistakes because if you put yourself in the best possible position to win, someone might just out bull you and you can't do anything sure. about that. And but, by the way, that better always be an option on the outcome, because if you don't have that listed as an option, you're fooling yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I, I always say like, I won because I lost. And if you can truly pull what went right and what went wrong um, in those really tough moments, you'll just be a better person. God bless. Okay, first of all, your website, beyondthelanes.com, www.beyondthelanes.com, look it up, so nice. Beautiful, I love your photography. It's unabashedly you, I am so in love with it. It's you wearing that stupid dress that I freaking just want to squish and like <laughs> bottle you up and be like, yes, um, it's you all together. The stories are inspirational. What you're saying there, uh, if I was just like a young bowler who was coming up, I'd be like a magnet to it, you know? You, so, you say that and it's funny because I, I, I'm bowling against these young bowlers out on the tour and in the back of my head, I think to myself, they don't like, uh, do they even know who I am? And like, I, I, I for instance, like Stephanie Zavala, who has been crushing it this season, um, I, she's just out of college. So, you know, much, much younger than me. And I went up to her at the Queens and I said, I just want to say congratulations. I am so excited that you won your first title. I'm sorry that I had to be in a, in a bowling center that was empty, <laughs> but I, you must be so excited. And in my mind, I'm like, does she even know who I am? But she was so sweet. She's like, oh my gosh, I'm totally fangirling right now. 
And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then we ended up bullying each other at the Queens, which was unfortunate. Hey. But I know. I um, I appreciate the thoughts on my website. I um, the one thing that I am good at is just like knowing my uh, my vibe. <laughs> Like that's yeah. totally my vibe. Um, I was specifically looking for a photographer to do that, that, that exact photo shoot. And um, I just want to bring something different to bowling. I want to bring a little, uh, a little more me, a little more um, spirit, you know, and fun. And yeah, I hope that I did that. Well, spirit is for sure there. The fun is always going to be there because it's you, first of all. I'm getting texts from people right now um, because apparently they can't message. But um, uh, and my, for some reason, I'm not live on the video, so I can't really see the comments. So I apologize. Oh, oh, but I, oh. I, you know, I just wanted to say that um, this endeavor for you, it, like you said, you want to give back to bowling. You want to give. You want to make an impression. You want to make a difference. This is how we all kind of. I mean, at least I feel the same way. I want to do this stuff that we're doing here. Yeah, it's my job. I work for Cubic Eye. Great, but. Cubica is a manufacturer. We we don't necessarily provide services that most people would think of. When you right. think of Cubica, you think, oh, they make lanes and pins and scoring and all that fun stuff. But in reality, we help people realize their dreams. We help owner operators put the equipment in and help them decide what best business practices they should follow. We can we consult with people, and you're no different in it when it comes to the bowling world you're teaching young bowlers who have a passion for the sport who have a desire to be great and successful you're teaching them the ins and outs of what it takes to get the job done and most importantly you're learning along the way yourself yeah oh totally yeah i mean we're pretty much the same <laughs> we are we are we are you paint that picture then yes <laughs> it is um, absolutely and without what you guys are doing there are no bowlers so I'm appreciative of. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the industry is the industry. We're bouncing back from COVID. Great. You know, there's that divide between the sport and the, uh, the game side. I think the sport has uh, shown that it is very much a foothold in the industry through the, through the pandemic because the first bowlers back into all these facilities wasn't your birthday party, corporate event people. It was the elite bowlers. It was the tournament players. They're the ones that carried the torch when you couldn't go in the bowl, when you were limited capacity. They knew it was safe. They were the first ones there. Mm -hmm. So I think you're having a lot of people revisit their business uh, model and say, ooh, I never catered to a competitive play in the past. Mm -hmm. I'm more of an FEC. But what about Monday, Tuesday nights? Why can't I have a full house of league? Mm -hmm. I'm, um, I'm always looking for great centers to host my, my youth tour. And if anybody comes to the elite youth tour and they see the talent that we have, I mean, I centers love to have us. They love to Absolutely. have us. I'm always looking for new centers. So if anybody's interested in the Chicagoland area. <laughs> or maybe the Wisconsin area, Dan Patterson. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. Hey, Dan. <laughs> you know they'll watch and he'll be like, when do you want to come? <laughs> he'll book you in at Menasha. You'll have the whole state. Okay. Listen, what are your future plans? Now, can I just back up for like 10 years? Yep. Kaizen. That was genius, right? You yeah. started something that wasn't being done back then. Bowling wear that was fashionable. Yes, it was feminine. I was kind of upset about it. It wasn't much for guys. There was. Well, for big guys like me, there wasn't. Let's be honest, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying, you were on the cutting edge of something there. What's going to be the future for you? What do you not see that you're like, well, if this came along, I would definitely explore it. What is that? Oh, man, that's such a good question um i'm putting you on the spot too what if what if i told you then everybody would do it oh, oh so I, I, will you. Say, I will say i'm doing it right now this beyond the lanes concept of personal development through bowling is where i'm where my heart is right now i'm really intuitive and i really believe that our space needs this our space needs to work more on um, on themselves away from the lanes. I can make bowlers better on the lanes. I can get you a better swing and get you to pick up more spares. But what no one's doing right now is really making you a better human. And I think that we can all work on that a little bit. So that's my answer. Um, and I do appreciate you acknowledging that I, am, I always try to do what's not been done because that's sort of how I live my life. When I 
came out with Kaizen by Deandra, um, there was no sublimated shirt. We were wearing very oversized men's polos on Team USA. Yes, you were. And I, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, we, um, we need to do something about this. And then I did it and it was fun. And I, you know, what? The, the thing about me is I, I jump into things that I know nothing about. <laughs> and I figure it out because that's what stops people from pursuing things. They think they're supposed to already know, but I'm here to tell you, if you have a good idea and you feel, feel compelled to do something, don't let not knowing how stop you. Because I had no idea how to, how to start a clothing company and how to um, get a designer and how to um, find a factory in Chicago, which was important to me. I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. And you just figure, everything is figure outable. You figure it out along the way. Same with this. I'm like, I have this great concept. I have this great idea, leadership and bowling and life lessons and positive development and personal development and all. I don't, how do I do it? You figure it out. And so that is advice to anybody listening right now that has an idea. Especially business owners, especially yes. business owners. Don't wait. You have lots of resources out there if you're a business owner, especially in the bowling entertainment industry, right? You've got uh, BPAA, you've got the Bowl Expo show, you've got IAPA for Christ's sake. That is like the biggest show ever. If you want to learn about entertaining people and guests in a facility and having bowling as an attraction, that's easy. That is simple. But if you want to have the best guest experience, not always easy, not always simple. You might have to do something outside your comfort zone. You might have to say, I have this great concept. I just need to do it. And doing it might mean that it changes over time because what you thought you could do, you might not be able to do. What you thought would be great might not be so great to the end user. But what happened along the way? You learned. You learned what the customer wanted. You learned what was best for you and your business model. And in your case, <clears throat> excuse me, you're learning about these children and what their goals are. And, and more importantly, about how to, like that this is a service, this is a product that no one is offering. And the value is far more reaching than 10 pins 60 feet away. And I think that it's like a, a weakness and a strength that nobody's ever done it because I actually think these people, because the, yeah, it's really not just for kids. Like you could go. No, to my, my I was just going to say anybody yeah. will benefit from this. I yeah. guarantee you. I developed this goals lab program um, and it's a four week program. And honestly, I had a woman, a professor from Chicago um, enter this goals lab. She is a professor professor of teaching, which was really intimidating. I was like, oh gosh, I hope I, I'm teaching this okay. Um, not a bowler. She's writing a bowling book. She wanted, she wanted to find what her strengths are, her weaknesses are. And she, she is like the example of like, you don't have to just be a bowler, but you can be to take, um, you know, take this seriously. This, this part of like, that's what I mean. Like I learned so much through competing and winning and losing that I really do feel like I can help anyone and everyone, but you're right. I feel like for the proprietor, for the manager of the center, I would be asking what, what aren't they doing yet? And know that you can jump into something and sometimes it will be a home run and sometimes you will swing, swing and you miss, but that doesn't mean that you failed. That just means you need to tweak it and figure out the secret sauce. So interestingly enough, Dan and I did a segment uh, and I made up a quote for him. He apparently, I thought he said it. He said he never said it, but he loved it. I said, if you want to hit a bullseye, you got to throw darts. Mm -hmm. You don't just hit a bullseye. You have to throw multiple darts. Yes, yeah, sometimes you're going to hit it on the first try. Totally. You can't be afraid to throw the darts. And but so many people, people are, are afraid to pull most, the trigger. Most people in life are afraid to fail. And, and then they don't ever succeed because they don't ever try. And it's the same thing about like setting goals, like as a proprietor <laughs> and in your business, are you setting goals that you know that you can reach? Because what's right. the point? Why don't you set? Okay. So 
quick story. I was, um, it was during the Beyond the Lanes Academy last year. And I said to um, my class, you know, we have one more week. What do you want it to be? I want to cater to you. And they said, well, it'd be really cool to have other professional bowlers talk about um, their life beyond the lanes. And I was like, oh, okay, well, who do you want? And you know, you know who number one was? Jason. Belmo. So it's like Jason and they wanted Daria and Verity. And I was like, okay. And they are amazing humans. So of course they, they are. Like they really are. And they came on and one of the students said to Jason, you know, how do you look at your goal setting uh, strategy? And he said something that I've actually used in my curriculum now. He said, you know, I just, I look at the outer space goal. I set goals that other people would just think would be absurd and you would never reach. Of course you do, because that's why you're the best in the world at this thing that you do. Because He's not afraid to set the target on the moon and end up in the atmosphere of the moon. It's okay. Well, yeah, and, and in some cases, actually get to the moon. Yeah, he made it to the sun and back already. <laughs> yeah, and, and so like that was such an eye-opening moment for everyone and including myself because I was like, that, that is why you're great. You're great because you set the bar higher and you aren't afraid to miss it. And you're going to just go after it. And, um, and I, I mean, that's applicable to any business Anybody. Owner anybody doing anything anywhere well interestingly enough you threw that out there about wanting a spot and kelvin parker in rochester they just bought abc gates bowl the old gates bowl in rochester well him uh him and uh russ Ballone and well russ Ballone owns it kelvin is part of the he's on the team we'll just put it that way yeah um he said i wonder if i can convince deandra to bring her elite youth bowlers tour to rochester new york we have a lot of youth bowlers in upstate new york and surrounding areas Sounds like a perfect fit to me. Everything is negotiable. Everything. So you get a hold of Calvin Park. Kelvin, you get a hold of uh, Deandra. You guys will work it out yeah. for sure. Listen, um, our time is, well, we've been going for half an hour. I mean, we can go longer. I can always talk for more. Um, I just wanted to, I want to wrap it up though. You are, you have more stops to compete for the rest of the year. What's your next tour stop? Um, I am not bowling this weekend because um, my son Madden is really big into baseball and I will not miss all the baseball games because for you. Mom, mom is out bowling. I have missed a lot already so far, but um, we're actually going to a, tra he's on a travel team and they're, we're going to the Wisconsin Dells to, ah! to play this weekend. So you're literally around the corner from Dan. So maybe he'll meet up with you up there. Really? Yes. Yeah. It's I'll not far him. at all. Yeah, I'm gonna let him know. I would love to to have him at, at his game. For sure. Next weekend, I'm going to Louisville, and I'm bringing my kids, so I'm super excited. They came with me to the first stop of the year, Minnesota, and to Lincoln, but no one was allowed in the center. Mm. So I brought them, but they couldn't even watch me bowl. But they were watching on the live stream. So now they've opened it up, so now that they can actually come in and be a part of it. So I'm very excited. To have them with me i know they're going to bring me good luck you know a couple of years ago um they were with me at a tournament i bowled in detroit and i made the show so i'm happy that they're going to be with me and then i'm going to be in houston for the lucy, so lucy i'll get to see you and hug you firsthand for sure i can't wait and then we're going to do the us open in sonoma california which isn't a terrible place to go no not at all mm -mm. shake that off all right. Well, we're going to see you competing in the near future. We're going to hear more about your wonderful, um, I'm out of jail now. Uh, <laughs> oh, Calvin was in uh, Facebook jail, jail, apparently. But we're going to see you, um, we're going to hear more about your students and your endeavors with Beyond the Lanes and the Elite Bowlers Tour, the Elite Youth Bowlers Tour. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for you, Deandra. Uh, let me know if we can help you in any way, shape, or form. You know we're always here for you. You have such an amazing aura about you. Your energy is superb. And I just know that life is going to be amazing these next few months for you. I am calling it now. I want to see both those kids on the lanes after you win that title. Okay? Oh, oh my heart. Yes, yes, yes. All, all yes to that. Thank you. Jay, I love you. I love what you're doing. I'm always happy to be a part of it. So don't hesitate to, to reach out to me. If you I won't be done from this show. You're going to be back, my friend. You're going to be All back. Right. 
Okay, good. I, I love you. I love what you're doing. And thanks everybody for listening. Um, and I'll see you beyond the lane. Yes, on behalf of Jay Nephew, DeAndre Beatty, Cubic AMF, all of us here at Beyond the Frame, see DeAndre on Beyond the Lanes and on the PWBA tour near you soon. Uh, we'll say goodbye for today. We've got another show coming up, and we're going to be live at Bowl Expo in a couple weeks, so don't forget about that. Woo woo. Okay, until then, peace out. Stay in the right frame of mind. All right, bye-bye. bye bye. Bye. Hold on.